tanks with Noblesse and Test of the Gold Club World Championship Series. MVU Black did not even make the BlizzCon Grand Finals. In fact, it was the only tournament in their entire time as a team that they played in. They did not make a final. So big time for Black to now defeat L5, get revenge, and take the crown back. Yep, that is that will be what's going on tonight as we see the bands on the battleground. Let's go over MVP Black banned out the Infernal Shrines as you see on red and L5 banning out Towers of Doom from the beginning. Wow, that's a little bit surprising, but as you it was expected to have that against MVP Black a little bit. Yeah, definitely so. Everybody starting off on Battlefield of Eternity here for game number one. Tell your friends it's time to crown a Korea champion. MVP Black will insta-ban Vala. Taking that away from SC. No surprises here. One of the picks as I studied both teams over the last few days, I feel like Zeratul will be the key going into both teams. Both teams have been playing Zeratul all, not too much, but it has been the crucial pick if they actually wanted to go Wombo Combo or even just to have that Void Person for offensive or defensive. So that will be a key point in the in all of the draft today. Well, it's really good for Black. They get first pick here because they've been prioritizing as many teams have Lee Ming on this map. She never goes this highly except here. And now what's really interesting about this, especially for Black, is in terms of support priority, Mary Day has played less games of Malfurion than almost anybody. He's played so much Karazim, so this gives L5 the opportunity to take Valfurion first, but this doesn't really worry Black. In fact, they prefer Karazim and have chosen Karazim when Malfurion was available several times. So this draft already, I feel like, is going in Black's way. Now they're going to get both Hammer and Leaving for damage, and they have ETC's Rockstar passive here. I think they're in great shape, and L5 is going to have to turn this draft around. Yeah, they're, they're going pretty fast on this draft, and banning on Karazim sounds okay, but there is also another pick of Uther, which Mary Day did pick when Malfurion was taken and Kerosene was banned out. So that's also a possibility. Maybe not on this map especially, but we'll see. They're, gonna, they're just going to ban out Tyrio here. Well, this means that Meriday will get Kerosene no matter what. And there's the Alarok ban here. Now we've seen this actually used by Black themselves with uh, Malfurion together. We've seen Alarok once on this map, this tournament. This ban might seem strange and out there to you guys, but it's a very specific strategy we've seen a few times, especially for the silence potential. And I like this choice a lot. It also, uh, Alara can also isolate just one target off, and with ETC Hammer and Leaming, you can focus on that one target, just blow one up. So, of now course, in, that's a good sign. In terms of DPS here, L5 is in a little bit of trouble, I would say. Hammer's removed, Leaming, Vala, Zarya's gone too. You're looking at probably this might end up leading even to a Gul'dan pick, which doesn't feel too strong for the map right now. But they're going to go Tracer, and I imagine that's going to be joined with her old pal, Tassie. There he is, there Tracer go. Tass. That was one of the DPS options we've seen L5 run it on this map before. And it's been run against them as well. Is it me, or does L5 draft start to look a little bit weaker because they were kind of forced to pick Tassar along with Tracer? And it has been working out, with it, especially with MVP Black playing on Tastar and Tracer before. But we've seen, we also see, saw Miracle playing on that same comp. It did not work so great against MVP Black. We're looking for coaches here and now. And it could even very well be Zeratul. No joke. It could also uh, lend itself to a Ragnaros pick. Now, we haven't seen too much play of Ragnaros uh, on this map, you know, priority-wise. Priority and Saki is actually the one playing it most of the time. So we've already got two DPS, so Rags out of the question. I was going to say, Varian is probably the choice because Varian can taunt the Tracer. Now, let's not forget in terms of CC, when the, the taunt comes down, you've got ETC's follow-up CC, you have Hammer, can also give a little bit of support CC, and there's a ton of damage that can be put on the Tracer, so she is going to have to be insanely careful about only going in when she has recall available or she is going to get toast by all that CC. Yeah, L5 still needs a strong damage here. Tracer alone cannot deal with Varian, ETC, Hammer, Leaming at the same time. There's just no way. She can harass in the sideline, do some damage later on, but you still need a consistent or even a burst damage. I almost feel like Gul'dan is the way here. Um, other options could be Sylvanas. Wouldn't be a crazy choice here. Uh, you're going to have to win every Immortal to make that worth it, though, I'd say. So it's a risky pick. And winning an Immortal against what MVP Black has is going to rely on picks. It's going to be Artis. Welcome back. Tychus right. wasn't even open. Yeah, Tychus I, was I'm, open. I'm actually very surprised from this pick. I know there has been a super play where Tyranus 
uh, last Sunday with H82 being on it, but let's see how well L5 can actually bring this around. Look, I mean, they're going to go all in with this. They really want to dive and they want to kill Black before they can win the Immortal race. They want to kill them first, then take it down. We're going to see if that works here. We're going into game number one, the unofficial OGN Phase 1 finals here between L5 and MVP Black. Tell your friends to get in here as we go into our very first map. Game number one, in blue, SC on Tracer, Nacho Jin on Tassadar, Jungle on Artanis, Nobles on Muradin, and Swoy on Malfurion. And in red, MVP Black, Sake on Sergeant Hammer, Reset on Leeming, Tist on ETC, Kyocha on Darien, and Mary Day on Kerazine. Oh, little pause here by Jungle to start things off. We got way too excited, too yeah. much fire. Too much fire. Yes, we need to cool down a little bit. We burned down the uh, the Ethernet cables. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it seems to be so an issue with Jungha specifically as he paused. And it, based on what this looks like, it seems to be a sound issue. So, I imagine something with his cable. Um, just to put out some stats for you guys. Mm -hmm. Soy is 12 uh, games in total. 11-1 and one on Malfurion. That's, tr that's correct. He has played it three times more than his next played hero on Rhaegar. So but also, Merry Day... Is 9-0 with Karazim. So how does that counteract? Well, the thing is, Marizzi also has played uh, a larger amount of heroes, including Ariel and Uther. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that we don't see Swite really do. He did play the one game of Ariel. It was actually one of his two losses in this tournament. But uh, I like the choice to grab Li Ming right at the beginning in this first pick and take that first pick away. And going into this map, the Li Ming choice just feels so powerful because... From the moment you take Li Ming, mm -hmm. you're you're really dictating how this draft is going to go in terms of poke on the Immortals. Even if L5 is able to invade properly, if they take too much damage and they have to kind of slow down their push, then uh, Black, especially if they're on their own defensive side, can just continue to poke the Immortal from safe range with both Hammer and Li Ming. It's going to be on Merry Day to provide the protection, though, and also going to be on the Varian play mm -hmm. to decide if they can lock down that Tracer. Both ETC and Varian can lock down the Tracer, but it needs to be done in coordination or she'll eventually just blink out. Yep, the damage coming out from L5, it's not a burst. Only burst you kind of had is Muradin with Artanis. And along with that, if, you, if Artanis actually goes in for the Immortal race, which I highly think it's going to happen, we saw a lot of the prism, the Gravity Vortex prism, just grabbing two. I don't think that's possible. Even if you grab two, you don't have the burst damage to actually melt, melt down one. So yeah. it will be a lot more of a triple strike with the uh, psionic build that you actually run for that immortal a lot Yeah, more. the amateur opponent and everything mm -hmm. else. And they can use that to race. Will it be consistent enough is the question. And I think what is likely going to happen is we're going to see a big invade with him and Tracer. Then after the, the dust clears, they're going to rotate him back to solo the immortal a few times. Like, not every time. Uh, necessarily, but that's that's kind of be something that they can rely on for that extra damage. But they sacrificed the burst you mentioned. I feel like they decided that in terms of just ranged DPS to race the Immortals, that was not going to be their way. Like, they could just not win that race uh, against Heart Hammer and Liming. It's going to be so difficult. So, uh, they decided to go kind of all in on this comp. And we've seen Tracer used almost exclusively in Korea as a solo DPS, so it's not out of the question. Its success rate, though, is what I'm worried about. It's been pretty low so far. Yep, against against Li Ming, Tracer is pretty viable, especially that she can just dodge all of her skill shots. That's enough, but they also have Sergeant Hammer and just ETC, Variant, the Taunt, as you mentioned, and Parse Light, just lock on stun on Tracer. I think just one CC hit on Tracer will be just gone, pre even with the shield. Pre-10, I think that L5 has an amazing draft, and mm -hmm. they will be able to run her with that like crazy. Before Taunt comes out, that's going to be super strong for them. And the ability to dodge leaming skill shots, for example, is very powerful as well. And she can go for some gank attempts uh, once she gets her Pulse Bomb up. She's going to kind of farm that to look for a pick. Just like Overwatch, you know, realistically, farm your ult, go drop that Pulse Bomb on somebody. In Overwatch, mostly you're waiting for that Zarya ult. We don't have that here, but... 
looking well, for we do have it. No one, no one chooses that gravi gravity. Disorder. I'm like, shh, we don't like to talk about that old. Um, no one knows about that old. Um, what? Ari Azari has two ults? I didn't know about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, she's going to be looking for picks on the top lane. Yeah. Which will, with this draft, I guess, uh, I mean, there's a, a few options it could be, um, especially post-10, if ETC goes for the stage dive or if he goes for mosh pit, like, that's going to change who's going to be uh, solo top. Um, but it could be varying up there as well. Yep, but just to check on, like, we've been talking about, like, beginning phase, the later phase, like, overall ba balance of the team draft, I feel like MVP Black has an upper hand a little bit. L5 is going to have a hard time after that, after level 10. And both teams should know when they're, when the team comp is strong and when, they, when the team comp is weak against the other comp. So that's going to be the L5's duty to actually go forward before they hit level 10. And MVP Black, of course, they will try to stop that as possible. And of course, Falstad also just went through the draft. There are no globals other than the ETC potential. So, uh, did get the sign that we are testing in game and let's, uh, Let's go right into match number one, game number one, L5 versus MVP Black. Sure, 100% some guy's going to have this timestamp on the YouTube comments to like skip through all of our shenaniganry. She's going to be like, all right, game starts at calling that guy out right now. He's going to do the right thing. Yep. Um, we're going to see an aggressive swap here. Wow. The socket connects here, and this actually will absolutely be first blood. That's the kind of thing you have to worry about when you're committing this much. Reset actually going to go down here as well. SC gets a perfect recall off. Two kills already for L5. Now, this is no shocker. Their early game is insanely strong, but Black got punished real hard there. We were just saying this. Recover. We were just saying this, that L5 is, has the upper hand from the beginning, and MVP Black should have been a little bit more careful because they, they should have solved that coming, and especially when Artanis is not on the map. You know, they don't have a whole lot of vision control either because, uh, you know, they don't have scouting drone. Um, there's just no hero here that's going to spot for this. But they had the lack of vision is risky enough to have Sake so aggressively positioned in siege mode. He played that just a bit too greedy. The death of reset is not on his fault. It's just the fact that things kind of snowballed that way and they were so far pushed. This gives a small EXP lead to L5, but it's really just more of an example of what we were talking about, about how this early game is likely to pan out. Um, Talking about builds here, it is amateur opponent for Arto uh, Ar Artosis, <laughs> Rip, uh, Artanis at level one, and uh, miss your Artosis. Though. We miss him so much, man. Here at Super League, but uh, anyway, everything else is as standard as it gets, pretty much. And we see the Q build coming out for Nobles's Muradin, so that's why you see him throw out these Stormbots. Look like, well, there's no fault there. Why is he doing that? But he's got mana refund and. He's going to make that a lot stronger later on, so some extra damage here he might build into. Okay, Junga aggressively swapping here. A bit too slippery as everybody, though. They're not able to get on this, and there's a recall used for SC. Always keep track of those. If he's on cooldown on that, that's when he's most vulnerable. Junga getting very low. He can get shielded. Not enough. SC, SC also gets very low, but just blinks away. It was also close. And the Pulse Bomb is very well avoided here by Black as well. So it's going to take some time for that to be rebuilt. But uh, in general, a good exchange here by Black. Good reaction time. Now, notice that Black... Oh, Meriday ends up going down here. That shouldn't happen. SC gets in the back lines and does that. But notice how they're just using Sergeant Hammer. Uh, and actually, well, they're rotating down now fully. But they had Sergeant Hammer poke on this the entire time to keep it even. And then, in fact, they have uh, about a... 1400 hit point lead on these Immortals because they got that pick and because they have the ranged poke that allows them to do this for free. It looks like we're just going to straight have a race here. I think this should be about as close as possible. Maybe even going maybe even going for L5 because they do have more damage right now. It's actually but really so cool. close, but it just barely goes to black. Wow. Um, this is interesting uh, that they actually decided not to invade here. They knew they had uh, just enough to win. But uh, that was really close, and Noblesse coming over to try to delay them there actually might have cost them that Immortal. And I think uh, just power of ETC also helped a little bit with that Rockstar trait. Yeah. Having faster auto attacks, I think it helped at the end. It was very close, so barely any shield. So this first Immortal is not going to do too much, but the fact this is the power of Siege, t uh, Siege Tank, has Sergeant Hammer on the back line. When you have some objective going into front line, you are on the back line, just on that Siege mode, also pushing the towers. Yeah, it gives you a, a nice edge here. It turns an advantage into a larger advantage. And that's what we're going to see with this push. Now, the retreat is on here. Noblesse looking for that Storm Bolt, just barely does not connect. That could have been some follow-up damage had that happened. Uh, Artanis is rotating down currently. As you see, Varian come to clean up the wave there, so. Just, I mean, again, as dead as 
dead even as it gets in terms of EXP. Um, and Artanis has to rotate back up. Notice the positioning here of Black. Just the missing Artanis was enough to actually make them hide behind the gate. Take note of this, Hero Leaguers. If you or if someone's missing in that top lane, you probably should take a defensive posture, especially if it's Artanis and he's got some good swap ability. Yeah, but Nobles gets caught on the sideline, but good cover is coming out from L5. SCSC getting some damage. Forced to back, blink back. Should be fine for now. Gets that shield as well. Going to heal up and just harass here. There's, again, no hard CC besides Power Slide right now. They're going to commit with it onto Noble S, in fact. Should be able to get away, but there's no hard CC until 10. So Black is just trying to do what they can to lock SC down, but it's always a challenge. Uh, the only win that, you know, Black had with that one kill was when Jung Ah went super aggressive and they just turned and killed him. Otherwise, again, this early game before 10 is going to be dominated by L5. Yep, look how aggressive SCSC is going. Without his teammates also, he's just trusting his trusting his teammate, trusting Tastar. Even Noble S seems a little bit too aggressive, even with that Tastar shield, just knowing that the team has a lot more shield and protective. Look at this going in, they're gonna go all the way in. Atan is joining the fight a little bit earlier. Kyocha also joins SCSC. Very low, gets shielded at the end. Oh, the pulse bomb on the Merry Day here is huge. They don't have 10 for the palm. They will get their own cam. It's gonna be a one for one for now. Looking for the kill here onto Jung Ah. Reset is going in. And it looks like he will be able to get the kill, but will Tiss die first? No, he will not. Reset just barely survives here. Does get the, the reset there, no pun intended, to get a little bit more health here with his dominance. Swoy is going to be next to fall, which gives Reset one more. But he actually needs to get away now. Parting gets taking a lot of damage, but look, there's the lockout I'm, lockdown I'm talking about. They do get the kill onto SC here. And overextension by L5, 100%. They could have lost. Only two and just back out. Tracer also went in at the last seconds, thinking that they have enough damage to take out Leeming, but that was not enough. Great covers from MVP Black also. But L5 had the reasons to go in right into that camp aggressively. They had, they felt like they had more power protection coming out, but I think it was a little bit more about the positioning of Artanis just staying in the back line just a little bit too much. Yeah. The CC control there with ETC as well. Tist really killing it. Um, showing us why he's really moved up to S tier right now in terms of Warriors. Doing a lot better than he did on Miracle. I have to say he was, I think, Miracle's best player. But still, he is, like, really showing it here. Okay, going to use that same power slide in. This time, SC is able to dodge it, but his recall is now on cooldown. Tist gets power bombed here, pulse bombed. Will escape. Look, no kills here yet. They're so close. Well, they're not going to finish anybody off. And because of this, Black, we talked about when, when winning the Immortal Race. I'm not talking about they race them in terms of auto attack. I'm talking about poke. In situations like this when they're ahead, they just poke and reset, poke and reset, poke and reset, and eventually that goes down. Yeah, that's the power of Leaming. That deserves a first pick. And if you actually get, if you actually try to block that, you end up getting with low HP very soon though. So they, L5 is also being super cautious. And for the moment, L5 seemed like they were doing so much more damage, but it's not. It's actually MVP Black. Uh, uh, hold on to that thought as no less very close. Also, Vamia is the first one to blow up. Ooh, Veriday gets that double dash there, so it's a one for one so far. That means resets here for reset. And you know, a well, an ID well chosen with this position swap as he's going in, trying to get more of these kills, trying to get more of these resets. Again, this positioning is favorable for Black. As long as it goes even, it's a win for Black. And they're even able to push this lane a little bit. L5 decides to concede the point, eliminate some of these shields, make this a, a worse immortal than it was going to be. The only position where Black will not have this advantage when they're ahead is when it's on blue side. When they're immortal that they're attacking is on blue side, that's when they're most vulnerable. That's when that poke is its weakest. But when it's down here on a lane they already control, they could just do so much with this. They have 10 now already. And we see, look at that Kyocha's health pool just jumping up as he gets that taunt. Yeah, as they hit level 10, they want to get a kill, but it has been to be Noblesse, so Noblesse just walks out of there. Actually want to go all in on this before they hit level 10. They want to pressure as much as possible, even with this Immortal, before coming, before the Immortal comes here. Archon is the choice of Heroic here for Tastar, so going to add a lot of extra damage. We talked about this being a solo range damage, but built this way, you know, Tastar does quite a bit. Parcelite does connect all the way to Nachogen at the very end, but that's not enough to take out SCS. Getting some damage, getting killed and shielded, but you got to be careful against, especially against the variant here. 
Okay, this is a ton of damage already done this keep. They really don't want to overstay their welcome, but I feel like they've got such an edge here. Big blind comes down. The swap attempt fails here, but SCE is on the chase. Not enough damage here. They turn on the Noble S. Look at this burst damage with the BFG. Stage type goes off here, and this is almost going to be a wipe no matter what. SC does not escape. They turn on the John Tist with the face melt here, and it is three dead on L5, perhaps four here. Dimensional Shift going to allow Nacho Jin a swift escape there, but this is a dead keep. Big overextension by L5 on the chase there, and they've been punished for it with all the CC. And now that it's, we're, we're 10 plus with Taunt and Mosh Pit, but especially Taunt, you know, they're just so much more able to make this happen right now. And instead of actually going back when L5 just hit level 10, MVP Black decided to face right on to L5. That was their choice then. They made it work, especially having that having that Artanis very weak on the front line of L5. I feel like they have they have really crushed into the lines where they can do so much more damage than MVP Black. Power sliding in. Tist is the player that you've been focusing so much. Having that perfect three-man mosh was huge. Perfect coordination. The blunt force gun is really strong in this situation because of the burst it can get to Tracer. All you have to do is blow her up once she's CC'd. And chasing her down and killing her is possible as well with Sergeant Hammer, especially with how she's being built here. And with the reduced cooldown at 7 on her boost, she's got thrusters more often. But that burst BFG is going to be so powerful. We've seen it really rise in popular and career right now. Does it work in every comp? No. But in this comp, when you really have just one target you need to burst down, then you win the fight almost no matter what. That's where it's going to be strongest, and that's where we're going to see it here. So I'm loving this, this draft and how MVP Black is playing this so far. This game is not over by any means, but with a keep down, level 5 is going to be playing the rest of this game behind until they come out a comeback, which seems unlikely as this game is really starting to snowball. Yeah, MVP Black, knowing that they they really want to pressure this bottom lane, it is, it is forced to be 4, 4v5 because the top lane is just pushing so hard until the end. And we said it's just poking from the side. Noble, let's try to stall some time. Uh, that's all, all That's all they can do. Saken can also go into that siege mode and try to press a little bit more, but there comes the Immortal, yep. the third one. Really got to give uh, a, a big point out to Sake not sieging up there. That takes a lot of discipline. He knew that was a risky moment there, even though they saw Tassar in the top lane, who's still there, by the way. Dotrogen up there clearing the catapults, or at least trying to. It's taken him a long time. Discipline really shown. Now, this is the poke I'm talking about. This is the riskiest position with this poke composition for them to poke in. Well, look at how well they're set up already. They have a talent tier advantage as well. So they just want to get this out of its position as soon as possible so that it'll swap somewhere else where they'll be more free to do that poke damage. Notice that as soon as Nacho Jin rotates in, they move away. And they do get the swap on Sake. It escapes without any damage. Now the target is on to, on to Merry Day. Noble has got some damage, but that's it. That was a giant swap, but no CC connected whatsoever after all. And with all these heals, look, Malfurion does burst single target. Well, it's not even burst. It's sustained single target healing. Karazim does AOE healing, and he's been able to hit four or five almost every time. Oh, this is a big stun here. OK, no one can connect. But the heals for Karazim have allowed them to stay healthy and continue to poke over and over and over again. They take all these defensive engagements. As a result, they're just healthier more often. Look at this. No one's even hurt right now on the side of Black as Merde is doing some serious work. Watch every single heal he drops and how he does it. Palm perfectly executed here on the reset. And but he's caught. Back to 100%. Artanis blows up. L5 does not have their heroics available at the moment. MVP Black has almost all of them. And even taunted Noblesse getting significantly low. And reset tries to finish him off. But this is just not enough, and Karazim also just bounces over. What an aggressive play coming out from Merry Day right now. Reset is really impressing me today. Like, did you see? Uh, he w goes for the disintegrate kill attempt on a Noblesse. The second he realizes it's not going to happen, knows how he swings the disintegrate up to make sure that he gets full vision of everyone who's there and also dismounts them so that just in case anyone else was on the chase or was pursuing, they would secure another kill. Really nice leaving play we're seeing here. And also Sake just having staying in the back line just force whatever he gets he got he gets swapped twice he only died once if he dies one more time that will be big and Jungla also making that swap on point it's a lot about L5's teammate and hold that thought as the team fight going in S C S getting very low Mary Day wants to finish him off he does and oh, Nachojin also getting very low Mary Day want to go all in. Nice dodge there on the BFG by Swoy's Ice Block. And a fight that looked already won for MVP Black is going to get turned here. That's all it takes here. And look, two dead. 
Soon to be three on Kilcha. There's no way out of this for Varian, and it is going to be three down. Good dodge here by Sake on that swamp as well. But this is the first time L5's been able to get some footing in a team fight that went wrong for them. In fact, I can't even give them full credit for that fight because they went in. Siege Tank was up for Sake. He was in perfect position. They were entrenched in, in, in an almost unbreakable fortification, and they went in regardless, and that's how they got punished at first. But if you really clutch moves, especially Swoy's Ice Block to make sure he survived there, turn that fight around. Yeah, I think Mary Day going all the way in didn't help MB Black at the end because he, he's the support. He, he, he should be chasing... He should be healing when he can also be chasing, but he has to make that decision. He made the decision to go in. Of course, couldn't really heal at the end. All of his back line of his teammates, especially Sake, losing their teammates at, at the back line was crucial to that team, team fight. I have to agree with you there 100%. Well, it's going to be the mortal against Black this time. A full health fort here and a full ammo cannon tower to help slow it down. It's not the most massively shielded either, but they should be able to get this fort no problem. Good poke damage again here. So much siege on the side of MB Black. The same reason why they're one most of the Immortals. It's going to help them defend against this Immortal. They have safe poke damage at range to knock this thing down. And we're going to see if L5 can actually capitalize on being aggressive here up in the front lines to stop this from happening. Already a palm going up into Kocha. Beautiful ignore here, though, by L5. They ignore the palm. Meridian is going to be the next target. A double kill here. Man, MVP Black's keep wall is now under attack. Reset also got very low at the moment. Sake caught by that root. Barely escapes with that big mosh. That does connect. Let's oh see. My reset. God. Reset's reset. going in no way. No. Oh. That was so clutch. Almost so close, but did not actually get the kill to get another reset. He had enough mana. He had enough damage. The blast is so low. Tis to know there's no way he turns on this. It looks like he was considering it. Pulse bomb will kill him there. Oh my god, that was, I don't think I've ever been that nervous and hyped and excited in my entire casting career as when Reset decided. You could see the moment where he decided, okay, I'm doing this. I can just do quadruple teleport and just wipe them off, but there was just a tiny bit of HP left for some of them, L5's member, and he couldn't really get that reset off. Wow. Well, what an aggressive play. He risked it and didn't really turn out to be the best. But I think it stalled a lot of time. Great plays coming out from Reset. Tist, so on point with the Moshes today. Mm -hmm. This does not happen, by the way. Just to point this out, in Korea, this does not happen, okay? Not this is happening to L5 with consistent multi-man Moshes. Consistent, okay? No whips, only good Moshes. That turned that around. Yes, they, when the fight reset didn't get the resets he wanted, but they turned it into an okay situation. They saved the keep, which means they still have that keep advantage. They're down on EXP, but they're still ahead in this game, 100%. Mosh is not ab available, so they're going to take advantage of that. A lot of damage putting on to Mary. He's in the front line, palms himself just to delay, take that aggro, but he's in the danger zone. Okay, he does get away for now, but Nova's still on the chase. Dodges that storm bolt, and Tist is going to help him recover here. No, L5, I think it would be wise to retreat now. Just start to get an advantage on these Immortals. They have so much auto attack race potential here. Get an early edge. Force MV Black to engage and not poke because that's where MV Black is weakness, weakest, right? They need to, if the MV Black is ahead, they win almost every Immortal because they're so good at poking. But when they have to invade, when they have to be aggressive, it's a little bit tougher for them. Yeah, Tannis actually went for that gra grabbing the Vortex just to get two of the targets and also may, it may also grab Sake next to it. So. Going for that talent is I thought it was I thought it was unlikely, but there goes the talent and also also bullet spray coming out from from Tracer's 13. So they because they do need a lot more damage, burst damage especially, so they're going for that talent. Okay, in a trench position here for Black to try to catch up here. They got lucky with this spawn here. They're gonna be in a position to poke, but the invade is real. Noblesse is coming in right now. He's eating a ton of damage from those mines currently. A huge blind and the pulse smoke connects. Also that double swap, but Meriday with the palm here. Sake lives somehow, some way. Tisk with another double mosh here. Reset's gonna turn around, gets the first reset. We'll get the second here on the jungle. It looks like, there it is. Ice block here for Swoy as he tries to stay alive, but it is not gonna happen. SC on the retreat here should be able to live. But Kyocha and Reset saying I'll save for a, okay, gets charged here. Nacho Jin considers turning around. He does not. And ST will win the draw! Oh my! Goodness! 
Oh! What did we just watch? This is L5 for Simi Black. If you, if you were, if you forgot, this is what we were witnessing right here, right now. I can't just pinpoint one best thing that happened during that team fight. It was just insane, and Sake also hitting four, five in a line with that BF. In terms of in terms of excitement, these guys are making it easy for me. In terms of commentating hype plays, man, there's ten at a time every time. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm trying my best, guys. All right, let's. Yeah. Uh, let's let's step back for a moment because Black still wins after this exchange, uh, despite the amazing SC play on that tracer. Mm -hmm. They still win the Immortal. About one third shields here. They've lost their keep. Keeps are neutral currently. We've got opposite keeps taken by each team. Now this, if it gets a keep, will solidify a really strong position for Black. If it doesn't, however, L5 will reach level 20 first and they will take a massive lead themselves because they'll be able to try to force a fight with 20 versus 19. So this push is really important for L5 to not lose this keep if they can help it. They've got Tassadar here, but he really doesn't want to be using shields on structures if he can. And there's so much siege up for Black. We talked about it from the draft. Mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't highlighted on Tassadar too much, but T Tassadar actually did 45k damage right, right after Tracer for L5. So that's also something to take in mind during the team fight that Tassadar does a lot of damage with the Archon form. Noblesse goes right in, gets taunted. He's gonna take some damage, but that's the time and SC just jumps into the fight. He does get a lot of damage, but just recalls to the back line. Okay, we're gonna see Sake just try to retreat out here as best he can, doing that extra damage. Look, he has Giant Killer as well, but look, nice swap coming in. John out here, Meride palms himself, perfect timing again against these Pulse Bombs, make the Pulse Bomb feel useless here, but it is going to be ETC. Tist, the first to die, reset. Used here, rather rewind by Noble S to try to get the kill onto Noble S. He avoids the prism, but he should go down here. There's the kill by SC, and this may just be game over for MV Black. They've lost two important tanks here, two important frontliners. They don't have Mosh Pit, but I mean, they have it, but not until ETC respawns, yep. which means they don't have good CC. This should be game unless Miracle pulls or <laughs> MVP. Did you see that Miracle. swap try onto the root? That was almost too perfect. It didn't. End up to be too perfect, but they're going for Mary Day also getting one more kill. That's gonna stall a lot more time getting the respawns mixed up for MVP Black. They're going for the core. It looks like they should be able to get it. They have Artanis, he's got Arvid, amateur opponent. Sake reset doing a ton of damage here. And as you were saying, LSC is very low here. But with good coordination, they should be able to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Reset is trying to find a pick right now. Seven seconds till ETC comes back up. Reset dodges another Storm Bolt here. The core is still under attack. He's dead. This should be game here. Tist comes back, but he's unable to get that Mosh off. L5 will take a hard fought game number one. Whoa. What in the world is happening? L5, of course, winning game number one was big, but those team fights were some of the best team fights I've ever seen in my hero's life. That